Greetings, Debbie Morton here, and I just finished up a one mile walk through the forest that's behind me. There's a trail that goes all the way through the forest. I wanted to do my walk and talk from there, but there were two issues with that. First of all, it's October. The leaves from the trees, you'll probably see them behind me. The leaves are falling off the trees, and so there's not much shade, so it's like it's muddled light. It's like light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, and it doesn't make for good video. And the second issue is I'm on an Airbnb property. It is also a working cattle ranch. And so it was a little hard to look at the camera and talk with you and be looking down so I don't step in anything that I didn't want to track back to the house. In this video, I'm going to be kind of recapping my first six months as a nomad. Six months ago yesterday, I turned in the keys to my four bedroom, three car garage home in Phoenix, and I sold everything that I owned and I'm now traveling the world as a, as a nomad. So now six months in, do I love it? Do I hate it? How long am I going to do it? And I'm going to answer a few of those questions. Also, I'm going to recap what led up to the decision to become a nomad. And then of course, I'll talk a little bit about where I'm going, what I've been doing, and where I want to continue in the future. If you are new to my channel, if you'd like to follow along on my journeys, be part of my community, I welcome you to go with me, whether you want to travel along. I also am a home-based entrepreneur, so there's little mindset things and motivational type of stuff that I'm always sharing as well. So like and subscribe, and let's go travel the world together. I'm going to start with why did I decide to be a nomad? My husband passed away on June 7th of 2022, a little over a year and a half ago. And although his passing on that day was unexpected, he was out on a hike, he was very fit, very healthy. He had gotten a doctor's note two months before saying, you're one of the healthiest patients I have, keep doing what you're doing. And he collapsed on a hike and I never was able to talk with him again. He passed away uh, before I could get to the hospital. And that started me on a very unexpected journey. But here's what I will also share is that about six months before his passing, I had so many premonitions and we had conversations about, you know, John, if something were to happen to you, how do I get into your computer to transfer your clients? Hey, John, if something happened to you, how are your accounts set up? Is there a payable on death? What do you want done with your, your stuff? I had actually had all of those conversations with him in the six months prior to him passing. Actually, in many cases, within two weeks of his passing there was some that was when he sent me a document with a password to his passwords file on his computer i asked for that literally two weeks before he passed away and so one thing that i want to share is trust your gut trust your intuition sometimes i feel like the the universe god angels whatever it is is there to protect you and sometimes we ignore the signs that we're given I'm so grateful that I paid attention to those signs because it made the transition for me much simpler. It was certainly not easy, but I knew how to get into the bank accounts. I knew how to get into his computer. I knew how to take care of a lot of his stuff. And here's the other thing too in a relationship is once your spouse or your partner or your loved one, whoever that is, once they're gone, you cannot ask any questions. So does your loved one want to be cremated? Do they want to be buried? Where do they want their ashes? How do they want their personal belongings dispersed? Those are all questions that you can't ask after the fact and they're uncomfortable and they're hard, but I can't stress enough to have those conversations now before something happens and your life will be so much simpler. Not easy, it's a very, very painful process. And the last thing you want is your loved ones in the process of their grief, trying to figure out how to get into stuff, how to handle the affairs, how to pay the mortgage of the house that they're living in. You know, you don't want your loved one going through all of that. So that's a real quick lesson that I want to share before I get into uh, a recap of, of my journeys. About two months after John passed away, I took a vacation. I had a couple of, we had a couple of vacations scheduled before he passed and one of them was in St. Martin and I went ahead and went on that trip. And I also went on a trip to Gatlinburg, Tennessee, and it was there in Gatlinburg two months after he passed that I realized I have enough timeshare points banked that I could literally live, if I did it right, I could live in timeshares for at least a year. And so I started like putting that 
idea to work and cultivating it and putting the pencil to the paper and doing a little bit of research. And so here's another lesson. When you have an idea, everything in life requires two actions. Number one, it starts with an idea and then it becomes reality and whatever that looks like, whatever the path to that becoming reality is. And so the idea that I had is, hmm, I think I could live out of timeshares indefinitely and the reality or the action steps, I started to put everything into motion. It took about 10 months for the actual reality to occur because I had to sell everything. I had a lease on my house that I wanted to wait until that came due. And so whatever your dreams are, number one, it starts with an idea, have huge dreams, and then start to put that process into action. It might not be immediate. It could take months. It could take years. But whatever it is that you want in your life, life is short. I've certainly learned that. Life is short. You want to make sure that you start to put that plan in actions so that you can live the life that you want and the dreams that you want. After John passed away, I had a clean slate. He was no longer with me, whether I liked that or not, he was no longer with me. And I decided that I didn't want to live in this big empty house in Phoenix anymore. And so until I figured out where I wanted to live, I would travel around the world and live the life of a nomad and hopefully find a place where I would ultimately want to settle down. By the way, right now, I don't know if I've already shared that, right now I am on a property I was in before. It is a tree house that was in, uh, this wasn't in the show, Treehouse Masters. This was actually, however, designed by the same designer of that show. And back in September, I stayed in this treehouse. It is an Airbnb, and if you wanna learn more about it, there is a link that you can, it'll be down in the, the description, but there is a link to that video so you can learn more about the treehouse. And, you know, like I say, the, these woods is an Airbnb, and so in staying at the treehouse, you have access to walk around this absolutely beautiful property, do some trail rides with the horses that are here, and so um, pretty amazing place. So now that I'm six months into this, where have I gone? What have I done? What do I like? What do I don't like? So I started out my journey I from Phoenix. I went over to California. I drove all the way up the Oregon coast. I had a company event in Colorado Springs. So I made a big loop up to Washington State and then back down to Colorado Springs. From there, I came back down into Arizona and then I traveled east and I stayed in Branson for a couple of weeks. I stayed in Orlando for a few weeks. I went down to St. Martin for a few weeks. And it's interesting because when I started out as a nomad, I kind of just anticipated staying two to three weeks in various locations. What I really didn't anticipate is the time it would take to get between those. I stay in hotels along the way or I'll sometimes stay with friends and I actually know the owner of this property so I've stayed here a couple of times. And, and so I, what I didn't anticipate was that it's going to be short little stays in route to get to the next timeshare location. And what I'm also finding is in those travels, there's so much to see and do, especially I'm here in the United States. And when I'm traveling, let's say between Arizona and Texas, it's like, okay, what are the national parks that are in between there? Carlsbad Cavern, White Sands National Park. And so I'm actually taking more time on the road to get between my two week or, or three week destinations. But I'm absolutely loving it. It makes it a little bit um, more of a challenge. Like you just get a little bit exhausted because you're always on the road. But I am absolutely loving that aspect of it, being able to see so many places, so many adventures, all the different national parks. I am a senior and I do have the annual, actually it's the lifetime, senior pass that gets you into all national parks. And I highly recommend if you're old enough to have that pass and you do love to travel and you love to go to parks, you're definitely want to get, going to want to get that pass uh, so that you can go to any national parks and it saves you the $25 entrance fee getting into the national parks. As far as life as a nomad, I am absolutely loving it. A lot of people don't know this about me, but I'm kind of an introvert. I don't uh, like to go to networking functions, functions where you have to mix and mingle are really, really uncomfortable for me. I'm usually not the person to go up and strike up a conversation with other people. 
And yet now that I am a solo traveler, if I want to talk to somebody, I need to initiate a conversation. And so what being a nomad has done for me is it's brought me out of my introverted shell. And because of that, I've met some just incredible people everywhere I travel, where, whether I'm having a meal at a restaurant or if I'm in the hot tub at a resort or swimming in the pool, sitting in the lounge chair or just walking around town, I've just met some truly amazing people, getting to know them. And um, it's just, it's been, I didn't anticipate that. I didn't anticipate that being a nomad I would actually be far more social and I would do way more things than I did when I was living at home in Phoenix. And part of, I guess, because I had made the decision that I was going to be a nomad, maybe I didn't put the effort into meeting a lot of people in Phoenix knowing that I was going to be leaving. And, and yet, well, you know what? Uh, honestly, I just, I don't know that I would have gotten out of the house. I was in a comfort zone inside of my house. I was, uh, I was busy getting rid of stuff. I had a business that I was working and I just, I guess my, my heart wasn't in it. Oh, sorry. There, <laughs> there's, there's a resident cat here and it just scared me. <laughs> so anyways, I just didn't put the effort into it. I was in a comfort zone, but once I was out on the road, I'm now out of what's comfortable and what's normal for me. And it allowed me to step a little farther out of my comfort zone and be a little bit more of an extrovert and meet a lot more people. And I'm truly, truly loving that aspect of being a nomad. So what are some of the biggest challenges of being a nomad? I, I had somebody ask me one time, do you ever worry that you won't have a place to stay? And the answer to that is no, I never ever worry that I wouldn't have a place to stay. I have lots of, of friends and connections. If I ever had to land in a place where I needed to stay you know, long enough to where I could get a permanent residence, I have places where I could go, where I could stay. In every town there are hotel rooms and I have never once encountered a situation where I couldn't find a hotel to stay. The one thing that has been a little bit of a challenge is because I live out of timeshares and I book special deals. So a lot of times I don't know where I'm going to be 30 days, 60 days in advance. I go into my timeshare site and see what the special deals are for the next 30 to 60 days. And here's what I didn't anticipate. The holidays are now coming up and People who are going to vacation during the holidays, Thanksgiving or Christmas, they've planned that a year in advance or as far in advance as they possibly can so they can take their family on that vacation. But because I travel last minute, it was a little bit of a challenge and I've, I've now got it booked up through Christmas Eve, but it was a little bit of a challenge. It's like, oh my gosh, where am, I, where am I going to stay when all of the timeshares are pretty much booked? But I did find some different places and I also had an extra challenge because I have a trip to Mexico planned in at the end of November, November to the first week of December. And I didn't know what airport I was going to fly out of. So I couldn't book the airline reservations for my trip to Mexico until I figured out where I was going to be inside of my travels as a nomad. So there are some different challenges. I will say that there's nothing, there's been no hurdles that I can't overcome. It's truly been an adventure. It's been fun. And when I'm asked, how long am I going to do this? I absolutely have no idea. And the challenge for me is I don't know where I want to live. And I don't, here's what I, I'm finding places that I know I don't want to live permanently. And I love when I'm in the mountains, I love the mountains and I think, oh, I'd love to live in the mountains. When I'm by the water, I think, oh my gosh, I love the water and I want to live by the water. And here's what I think will ultimately be a factor in when I settle down and where I settle down is, is a community or maybe a special, um, if I decide to partner again with somebody, they would have to love travel. But when I'm in a relationship, then I would settle down for a relationship. I would also settle down when I feel like I've, I've, met a community that just, it feels like home. Right now, home is wherever I am, it feels like home. And I don't wake up every morning. <laughs> it used to be when I first started out, I wake up in the morning going, where am I? <laughs> Where's the bathroom? And what city am I in and where am I going today? What day of the week is it? And I don't, I don't have that anymore. It just doesn't matter. I wake up and I'll figure it out soon enough where I am and where I'm headed. Uh, so I, I think when I settle down, it's going to be either I will find a place that just, uh, energetically feels like this is where I belong and where I want to put my roots 
or it will be because I have met a special person in my life or I have a community and I want to settle down and that is my home. And so that, that answers that question for how long am I going to do this? Honestly, I, could, I feel like I could do this for years. I also feel like I could give it up in the next month or two. So I truly don't have the answer to that. And sometimes we just have to let go of, of controlling everything in our life and just live in the present. Live where you are right now. Enjoy the moment where you're in right now. Have a dream. Have a goal. Create an action plan, but always keep a mind that's open to everything, attached to nothing, so that life can bring you the, the beauty and the things that you can be so grateful for and enjoy as, as you're going along in your journeys. So with that, I hope that that is helpful. I'm going to give just a recap of where I have been so far. I have been in the mountains, absolutely beautiful scenery in the mountains. Let me put my finger down there so that when I put the, <laughs> put the photograph, I've been in beautiful, beautiful mountain scenery. There's been absolutely beautiful waterfalls. I've experienced really, really cool things like being on the beach in Florida during the turtle season when the turtles come up out of the water to lay their eggs. And in the morning, there's from the turtles that laid their eggs 90 days ago, all the little baby turtles going down to the water. I had the opportunity to live three weeks in St. Martin and my, my studio looked out directly over the water. I could hear the waves every night as I went to sleep. And then Arizona, I had lived in Arizona for five years and I had never gone up to Monument Valley and some of the northern areas of Arizona and even the mountainous areas of Arizona. So I was able to experience Arizona and it's a beautiful state, by the way, if you've never been to Arizona, it is spectacular. I had grown up in the state of Washington and then I lived my adult life in California. I always drove I-5 through Oregon and so I drove up the Oregon coast. I had beautiful weather. The wildflowers were in bloom and the Oregon coast is everything. People say that it is, it's absolutely beautiful. And where am I going in the future? I'm right now, first of all, it depends on the timeshare deals. And so I'm waiting for some deals to come up for uh, Europe. And also I'm looking, I wanna do a cruise, maybe a relocation cruise that gets me to Europe. And then from Europe, I'll travel around Europe for a little while. I, I've never been to Asia and I'm looking forward to exploring Asia. So down in the comments, if you've traveled to some of these places, I'm, you know, I, I would love to have your input of safe places for a female solo traveler to go where I can just enjoy some incredible sights, feel safe, the beauty. And so feel free to drop in the comments. And so on my channel, you can see some of the different places I've gone to so far. I, I have a video on Sedona, I have a video on Texas, different places inside of Texas. And so feel free to click around on some of those videos if you're trying to look for some different ideas of where you can travel. I truly appreciate you being a part of my community and traveling along with me. And I truly encourage you, I am, I am loving this life way more than I ever thought I would. I don't see an end in sight. And you know, I, I just stay open every day to what the future brings and, and what my next chapter might look like. I wrote this one and it's turning out exactly as I wrote it. And I'm you know, always writing that next chapter and looking for different ideas of where I can be, what I can do and what I can enjoy. I truly appreciate you joining me. Hit the like, the subscribe button if you'd like to be notified whenever I post another video. I appreciate you and let's go travel the world together.